welcome back. Don't expect any sort of production masterpiece in this video. I just wanted to show you a little job that I'm doing for myself at the minute. As you may or may not be aware, I moved into this room on the top floor of a house. We live in like a tall, skinny, three-story thing. And one of the problems I've got is getting internet access up here. I've tried all sorts of wireless devices to make it work. They sometimes work and then they sometimes just randomly don't work. Here's what happens at the minute. Not only am I getting about half the speed I should be getting, but I also get loads of these weird dropouts as soon as I start doing anything. The latency's jumping around all over the place and generally everything's just a bit sluggish. I think the best bet, wired all the way from the ground floor where the router is, up to the top floor up here. This is a new build, but it's all solid walls and the partition walls are all made out of those horrible metal studs. So it's like living in a Faraday cage. The Wi-Fi has never worked properly. So the challenge is to get a cable from the router down here, all the way up to the diagonally opposite corner of the house where my studio room is up here. So this bathroom is next to my studio room and look at this we've got a bit of boxing going all the way down here and if you can just see at the back I don't know if you can see but there's a vent stack going all the way up the back corner and a vent stack generally always goes all the way to the ground level so I'm hoping I've had a little bit of a feel around the bottom corner there and I think I can get a cable through this boxing all the way like next to the soil stack basically. And that goes all the way up into the loft. So I can then run a cable through the loft and then I can drop it down this boxing, down here, down to floor level. And then I can just bring it along to the back of my desk somewhere. So here's the cable route I'll show you. Router's down there. I need to bring a cable through this solid wall here, up through the boxing that hides the vent stack through this floor, through this floor, through this floor, across the loft, and then down the boxing for this other vent stack, which happens to be right next to where my computer is. So let's have a look under here. So here's where that boxing pops out, comes all the way down. And then on the ground floor, it's coming through the ceiling there, all the way down. That'll go down into the drains but my router is just on the other side of this wall. I've already done an exploratory hole with my nice blunt masonry bit because I don't want to risk hitting the soil stack, but I've had a good feel around in here and I'm not hitting anything. I can feel I'm hitting like insulation or something. There'll probably be insulation around the soil stack, but I think I can make a nice big hole here. Let's make a hole in the box and on the next floor up. So exactly the same here. It's going to be awkward coming in from that side. I'll come in from the front. About there, I think. You'll see I'm kind of pulsing the drill. It just keeps the dust down a little bit because these do make a bit of a mess. I'll turn the speed down a bit. Hitting the metal stud on this side, that's fine. I don't know if you can see the, the metal stud at the side there that I was just hitting on. So, hopefully I can get my hand through that hole and guide the cable down through onto the next floor. And then what I like to use is just a nice strong garden twine attached to a nice heavy fishing weight or something that's, you know, got rounded edges and it's not gonna get caught on stuff. The reason I like the garden twine is because it's really, really strong and it's really easy to see. Um, but you can use whatever you want, you know, you can use fishing line if you want, or you can buy a, a rodding. You couldn't really use a rodding kit here because there's not enough room to get in. Just make sure you've got plenty length and it's not going to get tangled on anything because this has to go all the way down to the ground floor. But we're going to start here and do this straight run all the way down. 
and hope for the best. <laughs> Right, absolute downer. I've spent about 20 minutes trying to get the weight down and it's hitting something and I can't work out what it's hitting. It could just be because of all the insulation around the soil stack. So I've got out the big guns. So we've got the fish tape. Fish tape's really handy for this sort of situation because it's much more rigid and you can kind of poke it. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't really follow gravity, so <laughs> I'm going to try and work out a route with a fish tape. I would still prefer to get this down if I can. I've got some nylon pull cord as well, which I might end up using, we'll, we'll see. Just can't get in. I think what I might have to do is cut this bit of plasterboard out here, because it's not doing anything anyway. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah. What the hell? So there was a piece of plasterboard going all the way down there to the floor. Here it is. What I've had to do, I've got the hole at the bottom there. I've had to add another hole at the top and that's the, the bathroom is directly above there. So I think what's happening here is that it's getting through the floor, but then it's hitting the ceiling on the other side. And there's a, there is a little gap around the pipe at the top. You see where it's kind of cut square. And I think what I can do is get some fish tape up from this side and kind of go upwards with the cable instead of downwards. I don't think I'll be able to, well, I might be able to fish down that little gap, but it's, it's tricky because obviously the floor is in the road on the other side. And then on the bottom hole here, we've got pretty much exactly the same problem if I head downstairs. So again, we've got the hole at the bottom and I've added a new hole at the top. And you can see the, the ceiling is cut really tight around the soil stack. So all I need to do is kind of fish it past that point and we should be kind of um, plain sailing. He says, these sort of cable fishing jobs are always awkward, but I think we can get past that. Right, progress. Now that I've managed to get the fish tape, so here's the end of the fish tape, and I've managed to feed that down from the bathroom upstairs, and I've managed to get it through that little gap in the top that I showed you before. So what I can now do is pull up this string up to the top floor. And now I can use sufficient weight to get down this cavity here, down to floor level. I've had to make sure I've got plenty string here because this has got to go all the way down to the ground floor. Nice easy one. There we go. So that's now at the bottom there. And there we go, I can easily see it there, nice and easy. Now, next challenge is to get to the next floor down. I'm going to try and get the fish tape up, similar to what I did on the, on the last one. I might have to knock some of the plasterboard away from inside here. Oh, that, that feels good. We shall see. Nope. I've been up, put my hand right down the hole. Can't feel the fish tape at all. If I make a hole kind of here, and then I'll see if I can fish through from this side. It's not easy. Don't know where this is going, because I can feel it going up the wall. <laughs> I must have about five meters of it up there. I don't know where it's going. Day. Well, I'm on the floor above at the minute and I've got my hand right down this box and, and I can't feel that fish tape at all. I don't know where it's gone. If I don't come back down, it's because I've got my hand stuck in this hole. This is where it's handy to have two people. I used to do a lot of this back in the day, of network cabling, running cable through old buildings and stuff. 
at least in a new build you don't get full of black soot when you're doing this. Sometimes you can just put a bit of a bend on the fish tape and get it to pop out in a completely different place. That should be it. Try again. Oh, I've got it. Got it, you beauty. I've left the fishing weight on it because I, I need the fishing weight on it to get it down this bit. Yeah, got it. Again, we'll get plenty of this through. Just dangle that down. Whee! There it is at the bottom. This is one of these bits where I definitely, definitely don't want to accidentally lose the cable. So I'll show you how I'll do this. I'm going to put a loop in the end of this. Like that. that cannot come out. And then on here, I'm going to pop it through. And I'm going to loop this over like that. You don't want too much because you don't want it getting snagged. You want this to like just slip up the wall like a slippery slippy thing. But you definitely, definitely don't want to lose it. You wouldn't believe how many cables I've fished through walls over over the years of doing computer stuff. And when you finally manage to get your string all the way through. The worst thing that can possibly happen is it coming off the cable. So if you imagine this is going to be going kind of that way up the wall. So we want nothing that's going to get snagged. This is quite nice there. Uh, that should be fine. I mean that end bit shouldn't matter because it should be going in this direction. But I am going to tape it down just in case. I'm just going to go one floor at a time. I'm not going to try and pull it all the way from the top. Get this as close to the hole as possible. Just going to have to help it. It's getting stuck on the ceiling on the other side. Come on. It's hitting on the floor, actually. Here it comes. Woo! Last tricky bit is getting it up past that bit. Not that you can see very much, but let's just go for it. Oh, I can see it. There it is. Oh yeah! Right, the final bit of the puzzle is to get down this bit of box in here and I'm gonna have to go into the loft for that and I can't really film that. So I'll lower a string down from the loft. It'll pop out the bottom there and tie the cable on to the string and fish it up into the loft. And then once it's in the loft, I can get the cable all the way around to here. And then I'm hoping I can just drop it down that bit of box in and pop out somewhere at the bottom. And then at the bottom, all I need to do is drill a hole through from the other side of the wall. And I'm going to try and come through the inside of the box. I don't want to come through this bit of wall. I want to come through this bit through to the router. Jobs are good. When it comes to fitting the connectors, you've basically got three options. Squeeze the end of the cable really tightly and think happy thoughts about RJ45 connectors. 
Or you can ask a good friend who happens to have a crimp tool and a decent cable tester and give them ample supplies of coffee. Or you can buy a kit off Amazon for £8.50 but please don't expect it to be up to much for that price. You don't want to know how much a proper fluke cable tester costs. If you are going for the DIY approach, here's the colour coding. I'll pre-warn, if you don't get it right, you will have network problems. Right, moment of truth, I'm quite excited. For the minute, I'm just connecting directly from the router to my computer, but obviously you could install a switch or a wireless access point at the other end, whatever you want. Check it out, rock solid connection I'm getting now, almost three times faster than what I was getting before. A nice steady 35 meg connection plus a decent upload speed as well. The thing is, sometimes wireless will be fine, but if you're a heavy user of the internet, and obviously I am with doing YouTube and all that sort of thing, I can't have it where the network's just constantly dropping out all the time. And sometimes, eventually, you just have to admit defeat and go for a proper wired connection, and that resolves all manner of problems. I mean, just check out the difference when I've got a video playing. You saw what the latency was like before. And look, it's absolutely rock solid now. Really low latency connection, even with an HD video playing in the background. Massive difference. There's links in the description to some ethernet cable and to the cheapest connection pack that I've ever seen in my life. As I say, don't expect too much of it. Let us all know in the comments if you've had similar sort of issues with a wireless connection and you've managed to fix it by going wired. I hope you found this useful and I shall see you next time. Bye!